All right, YouTube, I am going to show you uh, briefly how to make a portable case with wheels and a nice handle on it for your 3DR Solo. This case will cost you less than $100, probably less than $75, but uh, kind of depends on a, a few factors. But um, it's not going to be great for... Um, backpacking or any of that kind of travel, but for putting the Solo into the car safely and driving somewhere to fly it, uh, it's gonna be really good. So first of all, I have a parts list. Uh, first thing I have is the Husky 25 gallon mobile toolbox. It has metal latches, it has wheels, as you can see down here. It also has an extendable, hand, extendable handle, kind of like a suitcase. Um, it is 34.6 inches wide, 22.5 inches long and 13.6 inches high or I guess you could say 34.6 long 22.5 wide and 13.6 high either way uh, it's $54 and you can get it at Home Depot number two is the secure line uh, stainless steel straps they're called uh, eye straps these are just uh, these little things right here that I've put into the wood, and I'll show you why in a minute. But these are, uh, you need four of them, and you can get a two-pack for a couple of bucks at Home Depot. Um, the media box is this little plastic box in here. Now this media box is uh, 9 and 3 eighths wide by 17 and 3 sixteenths long, and 6 and 11 sixteenths high. It's made by a company called Iris. I think you can get it at the container store. I'm pretty sure that's where I got it, but you can probably get a similar bin just about anywhere. You're just looking for those approximate dimensions, which is nine by 17 by six inches high. And uh, you don't need a lid for it. Then you need your pluck foam, which is right over here. Now, pluck foam can be very expensive, but I found a place called SRA, SRA Cases, and their website is www.sra- cases.com. You can also get it on Amazon for $12 for three pieces like this. And that's a pretty good sized piece of pluck foam. A lot cheaper than if you buy it from Pelican or somebody like that. And then finally, you're going to need some uh, screws and some washers to put into the bottom of this thing. So let's get started. Let me show you what I've done. If you look inside the case, I have put down two, oh, and you'll also need two by fours and a one by eight. So I've put down two two by fours. These are 16 inch long two by fours. And I put the case in here, the, the media case from Iris. And I used a piece of one by eight on the bottom of it. And the reason I put that one by eight on the bottom of it is I've actually drilled up from the bottom into that piece of wood through the case to hold it in place. And I did the same thing to hold these two in place. They're drilled up with wood or with screws from the bottom. And I used washers to hold it in, hold, keep them from popping through the plastic. So if you look down here on the bottom, you can see these are just um, either one inch or three quarter inch, depending on which one. I used, I used three quarter inch for the, uh, for the thinner wood and one inch for the two by fours. And it, just washers, just to keep them from popping through the plastic. So they bite into the wood pretty nicely. And I used what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws on the bottom. And these things are in there pretty tight. And so what I did, I actually put the iris in there. And you got to make sure the props are just right because it's a pretty tight fit. But I actually, uh, let's see that. It's good right there. I actually drilled holes in that wood with a three quarter inch bit. Um, it's a spade bit or, you know, kind of one of those wider bits. And I just took the wood, put it in there, marked it, and then drilled the holes in such a way that it would sit right down in there. What that keeps the thing from doing is moving anywhere, right? It's pretty much set in place. There's no need for any padding or foam or anything with it because it's not going to move. And then what I've got is, oh, this is one thing I forgot to talk about on the list, are these little, little bungee cords. I'd say these are probably about six inches long and maybe eight inches long. I just strap one there and one there 
and I use four of them. So I did uh, two, just to be safe. You could probably do it with two. Here's three. And I'll put one more on there just to sort of make my point. I'll do it diagonally this way. These little uh, bungee straps you can also get at Home Depot. They're pretty cheap. I think they come in a 10 pack for five or six bucks. All right, now basically that guy is down and you can see the props all fit really nicely. Um, you don't have to worry about them uh, getting banged up. I think I sweat on that one a little bit. And then these two in the corner kind of have a little bit of room but not too much. These are okay. Now the controller, the remote control, is actually going to sit in here. And that piece of wood, I cut it, as you can see right there, so that the controller would kind of have a little divot to sit in right here. As you can see, it kind of sits in that little divot. And it's pretty good because it holds it in place. Now I'm going to take my pluck phone and I'm actually going to put it around the controller because that's a pretty fragile thing and I want to make sure it doesn't get messed up or destroyed. And then the the Husky case actually comes with this thing, which is just a toolbox. And it will still fit in there, believe it or not, just like that. So you could potentially um, put stuff in that. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not, because um, I don't know if I need it. Because I think once I, I can put my spare props and stuff over on this side in a little bag, and they'll just kind of sit in there. And hopefully I can put something in such a way that it'll hold my... Uh, remote down so it doesn't pop up. I want this thing to basically be flipped upside down and nothing moves. Everything is safe in it. I probably won't flip it upside down but I want to have it ready for that just in case. So I'm going to play with the foam here, see what I come up with and then we'll do a little more filming once I have the foam figured out. Oh, one other piece of advice about the foam. The best way to cut foam is with a uh, Black & Decker or other brand electric knife. Um, these are typically used for you know, carving turkeys and such, but this thing actually works great for cutting straight pieces of foam. Now this is pluck foam, so you actually have these little indentions right here so you can pluck bits of it out. But if you want to cut through the ends of it and cut all the way across it, use that knife and it'll make a nice cut in it. Just keeping in mind that the pluck pieces will come out pretty easily. I may actually have to put some tape if I cut into it, I may have to put some tape around it to keep the pieces, the pluck pieces, which are perforated from breaking off. So I kind of messed up on my first piece of foam. Luckily, I got three for 12 bucks. So I'm gonna try it again. Uh, the measurement I had for the inside of this thing was around nine inches, but I don't, it tapers down toward the bottom, so I was gonna cut it at around eight and a half, and uh, I'll secure it to the bottom so it doesn't have to be a super tight fit but eight and a half is about right there. Let's see if I can do a straight cut down. So I decided to go ahead and cut out that bottom piece here. It wasn't doing me any good. And now I'm using the pluck foam to create space for the batteries which uh, will hopefully go right here and right here. Take this here. Pull that out. So let's see if this goes in there. Yeah, it's not bad. It seemed to fit in there pretty well. Okay, so now the only other thing that's kind of uh, left to do, if you have your antennas facing up, they seem to be okay. Uh, I'm just gonna pluck a little bit out right here. So it looks like this might be the edge. It isn't plucked. The antennas kinda poke in there a little bit, but that's okay. So everything seems to be uh, sitting pretty well. Now the only other things I've got to account for are the, well the gimbal, when I add it, should fit in here because it shouldn't be any longer than the legs. And actually with this propped up a little bit, 
the gimbal would actually have more room to go down. So I think the gimbal will be fine. I have the charger and the spare propellers I've got to account for. So I'm going to figure that out now. Okay, so for the charger, this is the charger for the uh, radio control, uh, the remote control. This is the charger for the actual solo batteries without the cord, which has been pulled off here. So I'm just kind of making sure not to strain this cable too much, but just see if I can wrap it around itself here without too much cable strain. And then I have this Husky bag, which I also got at Home Depot. It comes in a pack in various sizes, and this is the biggest size in that pack. So it's gonna go in there. This is gonna go in there. And hopefully this is gonna go in there. And then we zip this guy. Let's see if this guy will zip up easily. These are nice nylon bags with good zippers, so they should be strong enough to hold that. And that's pretty good. Okay, for the propellers, they are about 10 inches. I, I think they're exactly 10 inches, actually. Long, and I was trying to think of what I could put them in to protect them that would fit in there. And I have this piece of PVC pipe. Um, and it looks like about 2 inch PVC, maybe. Or four inch PVC. Let's see. It is two and a half inches. So the props are 10 inches. So I'm going to measure, let me just go ahead and make it a foot. So there's a little extra room in there for them. Okay, so I've cut this piece of PVC. Looks like the props will fit in there. Spare props. Even two of them still in the box. I suppose I could take them out if I wanted to, but they seem to fit okay. Now, let's see if I can put this guy down in here. Make sure these are on there nice and tight. Put this guy down. All right, so there's my spare props in that container. Now, I may at some point need to put a cap on either end of them, but for now they're tight because I have uh, two of them are in a box. All right, so there it is, all put together. I ended up stealing one of the bungee cords from over here. I didn't think four was really necessary, so I have one holding this guy kind of in. It's pretty tight actually. Got the two batteries here. I guess I could get another one and go over that way just to be safe with those. Got my charger sitting here. Got the props in this PVC pipe which is velcroed to here to protect them. The PVC pipe protects them but also makes um, make sure that they uh, are accessible and I can pull them out. Then the actual Solo sitting here with its feet in these holes that I drilled and then a bungee cord holding it down. So we're going to close this guy up, latch it, pick it up, okay. extend the arm, walk around with it, Shake it a little bit. Shake it. Let's see if anything's going to happen. Take it back over here. By the way, here's the uh, case I made for my Phantom 2 out of a cooler. I really enjoy making these cases, I guess. But, um,. Then let's take it over here and let's spin it around and put the arm back in, open it up and see how it did. Now look at that, nothing moved. 
everything is right where we left it. So if you're if you have a new solo and you want to make a handy dandy case for it, go to Home Depot and get yourself one of these husky toolboxes, as I mentioned in the beginning, and go for it. And best thing is nobody knows you have a drone in there, so you know we got security through obscurity. Thanks for watching and happy flying.